Welcome to episode 10 of the Comedy Kitchen. I'm your host, Dennis Worth, coming at you live at the Comedy Kitchen, where we're doing my two favorite things in life. We're doing some stand-up comedy, and we're cooking some dishes, and we're eating them up, and I like the eating part more than anything. And I do want to know, this is episode 10. We've hit double digits, and we're ready. The holiday season is coming. We're going to be filming a Christmas special, a one-hour-long Comedy Kitchen roast of me. So... You want to stick around and uh, make sure you tune that one in. It will be coming in the month of December, our Christmas special, and everybody's going to make fun of me. And then at the end, I'm going to make fun of them. So payback is up. But that's all right. So the holiday season is coming. What we're going to make for today is we're going to be cooking up a banana cream pie, and you can get it ready for your holiday season, and you can eat that. Uh, check out my website, www.dennisworth.webs.com. Support local comedy, Joke in the Box Comedy Clubs. And one of the guys ha has worked my room many nights, and it's been my pleasure to have him. Please welcome to the show, Mr. Rich McCabe. Rich, thank, thank you, you for coming much. on. Thank you. All right, you ready to make some banana cream pie today or what? I'm ready. All right, this is the Comedy Kitchen. We do the cooking thing. We do the comedy thing. So before we get started, tell the folks, how did you get started out in comedy? I uh, took the same course you took at the, at the, the college, local college. And um, kind of went from there, did some rooms. You got a bunch of rooms going. You gave me a bunch of mic time and... Uh, that's about it. Been going ever since. And that was uh, that was Jerry Caruso that uh, actually does the uh, class on comedy up at the college. And uh, Tom, what about taking a class with Jerry? What were some of your memories of taking a comedy class up there with him? Um, I, I, I took it because I figured uh, I was getting into the situations where I was uh, getting into public speaking because of my job. And I really thought that, it, you know, I'd get something out of it. And I didn't know he was going to make us perform in front of live people and, and <laughs> stuff like that at the end. So... Uh, although it was probably one of the scariest things I've ever been forced to do in my entire life, um, it, it ended up being a really good thing, and uh, it's, it's fun. I've met a lot of good people. Jerry is amazing. Um, he's had such a huge effect on so many people in a positive way. Mm -hmm. Uh, that it, it was good. It was one of the best decisions I ever made. It is. It's a really fun class to take up there. And yeah, if you've never spoken in, front, spoken in front of people before, that's a really tough time. It's a tough fear to get over. And once you do get over it, it turns into a lot of fun. But getting over that hurdle, it takes some longer than other. But uh, once you do, and you guys remember, I think episode two, we had Jerry on the show. And you know, Jerry's a great guy. So if you want to take a course in comedy, that's how me and Rich get started. And look at us now, Rich. We're on the comedy kitchen, so it all paid off for us. Right? Yeah, much better than this. Let's do it, man. You ready to get started here? I am ready. All right, we're going to take our little small pan right here, and in that we have to scald three cups of whole milk. So I think you got some whole milk over there. We might have our cup over here. Do, do, do. Three cups. Do, do, do. That would be on the other side. There you go. That'd be easier. We'll turn this right on. Get ready to scald some milk. Look at that, right on the three. Not bad for. Public school. You've done this before. Who does the cooking in your house, Rich? You or the wife? Look at me. Oh, well, yeah, he's a big guy. I know what's going I on. I do the cooking. Right on in there. We're going to pour that. We don't allow my wife to try to cook. You know, actually, a lot of the male guests I've had on, you know, it's the old stereotype. You think the wife does the cooking, and most of the men say they do the cooking in their house. But that's how you get good food. you got to cook it yourself. You can't lay that into anybody else's trust. All right, in our big pan here, what we're going to do, we're going to get three-quarters of a cup of white sugar. Got you some white sugar here. Grab you our three-quarter cup, Mark. And we're going to get that onto a medium simmer. And we have our milk here on high. Going at it like an old pro there, Rich. That's what I like to see. That'll work. A little extra is good because, you know, we're big guys, so it don't matter. Right in the cup. Oh, well, you already got it in the cup. So we're doing double cup here, I guess. All right. See? No, Either try. cup, it's three quarters. Boom, Did, we're in. Didn't trust me. All right. That's all good. Well, you know, mom, mom gets us set up here, and we got, like, way more than we need. But mom is better safe than sorry. I love mom. It's good. Give it up to mom. Gotta have them. Gotta love them, Mom. That's right. All right. In addition to that, we are going to put a third of a cup of white flour. So we've got flour over here. Throw a third of a cup on your side in. 
Just kind of slow down. I'm getting tired. I'm ready. I'm ready for mom to put like a smoking oven behind us or something. We do barbecues in here soon. You know. <laughs> but it's all good. All right, looking good. Third of a cup. We good? We're good. Right on in there. All right. Next thing we're going to need is a one quarter teaspoon of salt. And uh, you found them right over there. Move our flour on back so people can see what we're doing here. So as you're putting in your quarter teaspoon of salt, how long have you been doing comedy for now? Uh, just probably over, a little over three years. A little over three years? Yeah. So if people wanted to see Rich perform, other than I know you play my clubs a lot, Joke in the Box, where else can they catch you in the Central Mass or wherever you play? What are some of your favorite rooms? Uh, you know, it doesn't, the rooms don't really make much difference. A lot of the uh, fundraisers, things like that, that we've done over the years have really been uh, some of the best rooms to play, so. That's, uh, yeah, it's always good. A lot of the, the fundraisers are the best because you can give back to, to comedy. You get to do what you love to do, and you get to help people out. It's just a win-win situation. All right, so we're going to mix this up a little bit here. And uh, all the years you've been doing comedy now, you look back, what's one of your favorite memories in comedy? What was one of your favorite things you did in comedy so far? Probably the first show that Jerry made us do in Gardner. Um, because it was the first time that I, I realized that, um, you know, once, once you get the, the first few laughs, and, and it's, it's not just family that feels bad for you, it's actually people enjoying themselves. Um, it, it, it was just, it was an amazing feeling to actually do that and to be able to put some smiles on people and that kind of got the whole ball rolling. Had that day not gone well, I probably would have just kind of walked away and never really tried it again. That's true, yeah. When you first start out in comedy, you get that first laugh and it's really addictive. You can't wait to get back up there and do it again. But, you know, when you're starting out, you don't have any material worked out and some nights you hit it home and you say, this is what I'm going to do the rest of my life. Then other nights you bomb and you drive home. I'm never going to do this again. Why did I do this to begin with? I'm making a fool. But if you get past that, eventually it does come to you. And we've had a lot of fun over the years doing some shows together. Yeah, There's been, been some, some fun shows. Been some good ones. Some special stuff. All right. So, uh, let's see, how's our milk doing here? All right, we're getting there. We're going to give it a little bit more. All right, so uh, I know on the scene we do a lot of the bar shows, and like you said, the fundraisers, those are the big crowds, the fun ones. But we do the bar scene. We'll go anywhere people want to laugh. We don't care. And I know doing the bar scene, sometimes you hit drunks, hecklers. What's, what's one of the craziest things you have to do, had to deal with in comedy? Um, probably... <laughs> The, the bars and stuff, I haven't really had anything that's really, really tripped me up. Most of those people are, are drinking, which is a, a, big, uh, a big help when you're doing comedy. The, when we first started, we were doing open mics, and we'd go, we'd drive an hour, hour and a half to an open mic somewhere, and there'd be two people. And those two people would be talking amongst themselves, basically hoping that we would just shut up so that they could hear each other better. Those trying to be funny and trying to do your stuff in front of two or three people that really don't want you talking was probably the trickiest thing and, and uh, you know, the hardest thing to try to deal with. Yeah, they say, you know, in the, uh, in the benefit shows, people are paying to get in, you've paid, they've paid, you have their full attention, you don't have to fight to get it. Where if you do the bar shows, some are there for the show, some are there to drink, and the ones that are there to drink, you have to win over their attention. And some nights you do, some nights they don't. Some nights they want to be a part of the show, so you just got to make it work. Whatever happens, you have to make the show work so it's all good for people. All right, so we got our milk getting hot here. It's looking good, isn't it? I think it's looking good anyway. I can smell it. All right, so what we're going to do is grab our small bowl over there. All right, and in that we need three egg yolks. You got your eggs there. This is my so, specialty. All right. Well, we might want to set that out so the folks can see what we're doing here. So can you do a long arm? It's... Watch this guy go. He's going to show how he cooks at home right here. <laughs> all right. So that one. We got one. Well, I guess, you know what? We need the eggs in that one, so why don't we put the yolk in there? Oh, looks like the yolk's on me. The yolk's on you. There you go. ba -doom. <laughs> All right. He's going at it like a semi-pro here. Yep. It's looking good. How you like your eggs, Rich? Uh, you're a sunny eating. side up man eating. That's the eating. best way. That's... Any way you go, that's the best way. My doctor just loves it when I pack those eggs All in. Right, actually, you pour the yolks right in here if you want. Oh. Uh, evidently not. All right. We're not using the yolks, I hope. 
Yeah, we're using yolks. Oh, it's the yolks we're using. That's what we're trying for, Rich. Well, that would have been a handy thing to know. <laughs> so I, my doctor doesn't let me eat yolks. So. <laughs> That's all right. We'll figure it all out here in the comedy kitchen. All right. <laughs> get that one. Throw the yolk right we'll in We'll save there. that one. Mama Jamma. And look at that. Whamma jamma. We're going to go with two egg yolks today. Two egg yolks today? It's an old family Another recipe. One? All right, that's good. Because we're all good here. All right, what else do we need? All right, we need to uh, get. No, 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 no. We're going to take our whisk. We're going to just whisk them up a little bit, the eggs there. Not too much. These puppies, right? Just those puppies. You just want to lightly mix it up a little bit there. There we go, looking good. That's good, that's good, that's good. Set that beater, the uh, whisk right in the old cup there. All right, we'll set that right off to the side here. What we're gonna do is we are gonna pour our milk right into the mixture here, so. And uh, we're, uh, yeah, we're throw the milk in there. And hopefully that'll cool us off. It's sounding yummy, ain't it? When you get the sounds in cooking, it's, it's yummy. How it's far so is the fire department amazing. from this place? Hey, the Lemister PD and fire department, they are some of the best in the country. And remember when you want to do a comedy show that I have buttered you up on the comedy kitchen here. All right, we're going to mix this up a little bit. And uh, as we're mixing this up, let's get on to the next question. As, uh, as you were growing up and thought about doing comedy, who are some of the mainstream comics that you looked up to that inspired you to want to try and do comedy? Um... You know, Bill Cosby, I always enjoyed. I always thought he was absolutely amazing just because his stuff was something everybody could relate to, especially once you get older and you get kids. Uh, Bill Cosby. And then as I got older, um, you know, Sam Kittison. Um, My hero. <laughs> you know, just, I don't know. There were, there were a lot of them that, that came along. I used to go into Boston. I've seen a lot of them. Um, and, and, and I don't really have a specific favorite, but there are, um, it's just, it, it's amazing. When you see a show and you can't drink your drink for 20 minutes because they just have you in stitches, it's, <laughs> it's an amazing thing. It's a good thing. What are, what are some of the comedians you went to see live that really, really left you in stitches? Um, oh, God. I did see Bill Cosby. He hey, was really everybody's good. Everybody's family dad. There you go. Um, I'm really bad with names. It was, it I was, saw Bill up at uh, Foxwoods. One, one of the one of the guys off of Living Color, Living uh, Color, uh, Richard. Ooh, can't even remember his last name. He was amazing. Uh, he picked on me all uh, uh, the entire night. I was in the front row. You were part is, of the show. There you yeah, go. that was fun. Um, oh God. Coming up with blanks right now. Okay, but Bill Cosby was one of your big influences. TV Dad, everybody's TV Dad. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned Sam Kennison. He was the reason I started coming. I wouldn't even be doing it, and I would have missed out on all the fun if it wasn't for Sam, because he's really, he's something to watch. All right, we're gonna cover this up, and we're gonna let that cook for about a minute until it's thick. And uh, as we're waiting on the uh, on the local scene, who are some of the comics on the local scene you enjoy working with? Uh, there's a guy, Dennis Worth, who's pretty amazing. I've seen him a bunch of times. Um, um, you know, it's once again Jerry Caruso. There's 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 a lot of local people that I've seen that I've been able to work with, and um, uh, Alana uh, in New Hampshire is is very funny and has been really good for comedy. I guess that's probably what I appreciate most is the people who go out of their way to help other people, and um, and there's been a lot of those that I've met. So. You know, nobody would have a chance if there weren't people running rooms like Dennis and Alana and, uh, you know, they, they put in a lot of time, they put in a lot of effort and they drive a lot and, uh, and it's, it's greatly appreciated. And it's great, you know, it's great when you have great guys like Rich in your room. I'm going to give a compliment back to you, but yeah, you know, there's some good people in comedy, there's some bad people in comedy, and the good ones in comedy are ones that want to try to help you out, that want to help you get better, and unfortunately, there's other comics who like to beat you down, and they don't want you to get better because they consider you the competition, but certainly ones you missed. Alana Susco, one of the sweethearts of comedy, we had her on the Comedy Kitchen, you've seen her. Jerry, we talked about him, he gave us a start, he goes above and beyond to help out, and I try to help out too. If you want to play one of my rooms, then I do my best to get you in there, and I'm giving you the audience, the people I've worked with here on the Comedy Kitchen, so it's all a fun time we're having in comedy, and that's what it's all about. If you have fun doing what you do, you never work a day in your life, do you, Rich? That's true. Absolutely not. All right, so what we're going to do is now we got this heated up a little bit here, I think. Ooh, ooh is that... Oh, 
Oh, I get to eat this after the show. I get excited because I know I get to eat it afterwards. So. I thought I got to eat it. Yeah, well, we both get to eat it. See, I'll fight you for the last uh, piece, but, you know. There's one pie. No, no, you're the guest. I'll give you the last piece. there's one pie. See, Mom don't want me eating the last piece. He's easy. Those are my hands. It's food. I love to eat. It actually looks pretty good. It's looking good right now. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to set that up, set it on a little burner over there, if you would. All right, and we're going to shut our little burner off for now. All right, what we need next is we are gonna stir in one teaspoon of vanilla. I think you get the vanilla over there, you get the spoons in front of you. This will be easier than the egg yolks. There you go. So as the holidays are coming here, what, what, what are some of your favorite pies that you look forward to at the holiday season? What's some of your favorite pies that you wanna eat up at when you get the holiday season. You know, <laughs> anything I won't get in trouble for eating. <laughs> uh, banana cream is good, chocolate, um, chocolate cream pie is, is up there on the top. That's one of your favorites uh, at the lemon, holiday? Lemon meringue pies, I'm pretty picky. It's a classic, yeah. right? How, how much vanilla? <laughs> we, what do we got for vanilla here? We got one teaspoon of vanilla. We're gonna add that right oh, into our mix. Teaspoon. You don't wanna, you got right half in there. Again. Right, yeah, right in there. That's half, half. I mean, yeah. We got another half. We're going to mix that right in there. All right. After that, we need two tablespoons of butter. You got some butter over there? It's kind of convenient how this stuff is just here. See? That's the power of mom. Don't ever underestimate the power of mom, I'll tell you right now. See, why do you think I'm so big, okay? Because I know how to cook. It's because I ate her food growing up, and, you know, now I know how to eat. What, what, was, what, was, what was one of the favorite pies that your mom made over the years that, that you couldn't wait when you were a kid to get to the holiday season to chow down on? It was a lemon meringue. That was her specialty, that, yeah? That was, that was it. Two tablespoons. That didn't look like two tablespoons. I know two tablespoons when I see it. I get a doctor's <laughs> talking to me, all right? So. I know what you're saying. You don't need a uh, banana cream pie to get healthy. One more of those and I think we're good. This will thicken it right up and add to the thickness of it. This is looking yummy. All right. All right, we're gonna stir this until it's warm, which is cooling off a little bit. We wanna cool that off a little bit as we go. All right, what you wanna do is you wanna go down your store and you can make your own pie crust. I buy them pre-made, it's depending on what you like. We're trying to do quick recipes. We're not trying to confuse you here where most times you tune in a cooking show, that's why, because you have to watch them do it because you couldn't. Anything we're doing here in the Comedy Kitchen, you can do right at home, so we're not trying. So we're gonna make it easy for you so you can enjoy. So get our little pie crust here, buy one at the store. You're gonna cook that up for about 12 minutes, okay? And hey, we're ready to go that quick, okay? Gonna set that right out front here. And uh, what we're gonna do, gonna grab a couple bananas here. See, Rich is getting into it. Eating, well, it's looking good, isn't it? Well, ever since you said we could eat it when it's done, yeah. You're looking forward to that part, ain't you? All right, we get you one banana. We got a little knife right there. I'm gonna peel it. We're gonna cut it right into our pie crust here as I drop stuff here. So, uh, what do you got coming up? You got any shows coming up? I don't have anything scheduled other than uh, a roast. Uh, the Roast of Dennis Worth. Tune yeah. in live here on LA TV. You're going to cook me up that day. You ready to cook me up, Rich? Yeah, I got a little You'll bit of stuff. You'll be back. That's right. A little bit of stuff. All right, we're going to reach out right in the pie crust. Don't break nothing like me. We, we make a mess, but it's good. Now right, we're going to cut those up into little slices. Well, I'll tell you what. If you want to check out one of my rooms, we're at JD Chasers in Hudson, New Hampshire, the first Thursday of every month. And if you would like to come up this month and host Rich, I'd love to have you, but that's up to you. You don't have to tell me on air, because if you can't make it, I don't want you thinking. Yeah, good pizza there, too. They, they have the best. It was free pizza night this month. That's even thinking about doing that again, because people like the pizza. <laughs> All right, we're looking good there. And you know what? We're going to do that one more. Whamma jamma. That's the new catchphrase. I did that on one episode. I said, whamma jamma. I was all excited. Now, I walk around Lemister. People see me, they go, whamma jamma. Whamma jamma. That's me. Nobody can believe I'm doing a cooking show. You'd think a fat guy that get it, you know, that I can cook, but who knows? This is looking like breakfast here. You ever have pie for breakfast, or do you save it for a dessert? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm asking fat guy questions. We know the answer, but the skinny people at home, they may not know the answer, so we I don't have even pie know. Pie for breakfast when there's no ice cream. Pie for breakfast, pie for lunch, pie for supper. You're going to have pie. It's all good. All right, Rich. So. What we're gonna do now 
is if you're pretty handy. Even out your bananas on the bottom of there, what you want to do is we're going to take our little mix and just pour it right over that until it's full. Might not take the whole thing, so be careful, but just until all the bananas are covered, you want to pour that in. Actually mm -hmm. introduced my son this morning to breakfast ice cream. Breakfast ice cream, there you mm -hmm. go. You can get some deep fried ice cream. That's some good eating right there. Uh, looking That's about good. We don't want to overflow too much. All right, and uh, we got time constraints here in the Comedy Kitchen because we're on TV, but you want to let that cool off a little bit more than that before you put it in, but we'll let it cool as it is in there. And uh, on your pies, what's one of your favorite toppings? Um, I've been known to eat whipped cream. Look at that. That's what we're talking about right there, folks. Open that up, a little bit of cool whip. We're going to throw that right on top for it. Oh, I've never put this on anything before. You just eat it right out of the bowl? Whatever way it works Actually, for you, right? Actually, squirt things with the, in the mouth. Oh, I got you. There you go. It's the best way. So as we're doing this, getting back to the uh, comedy thing here as we're winding down the show, uh, after you get done your comedy career, you look back on comedy, and what, what do you hope to accomplish? What are some of your goals? What do you want Rich McCabe to be remembered for in comedy? Um, you know, I... I, I you have to since, cover the whole thing, maybe just a little Ever since I was small, I always thought... It, there was nothing better than you could do to somebody or for somebody than to uh, put a smile on the face, make them laugh. And uh, so hopefully, you know what, uh, raise some money for some, some fundraisers, help some people out, and uh, maybe, uh, you know, give a few giggles here and there. And that's it. Yeah, you get to do what you love to do. You get to laugh, make people laugh, and we'll gig anywhere you want to laugh. We don't care if you're two people or 200 people. If you want to laugh, we'll get the job done for you. All right, that is looking pretty good, and I don't think we want to put much more because we're spilling over a little bit here. Are you selling it? But, uh, you know, well, I see it. The folks at home think, hey, it's still looking good. Either way, even if you make a mess with cooking, you get to the eating part, it's all good. All right, we don't want to burn ourselves too much here, but uh, we're going to hold that up, and hopefully we can get a little zoom in on what we made here. And <laughs> voila, that is your banana cream pie that as we pour it all over the table. But All right, I'm not going to tilt it anymore because I did it with a clam chowder too, and we've been good, but it's good. So we're going to let that cool off. All right, it is a comedy kitchen. We did the cooking thing. Would you be gracious enough to give the crowd a little bit of your comedy? Sure. All right, stick around, and we will be right back. Welcome back to the Comedy Kitchen. I want to thank you guys for tuning in this episode, episode 10. Now you guys know how to make the banana cream pie. Holidays are getting ready. And uh, don't forget, stick around. You're going to want to tune in my Christmas episode. They're going to be the Comedy Kitchen roast of me. They're going to be cooking me up that day, and you can hear the good things and bad things about me. And you're going to see a lot of our past guests, some future guests. I'm bringing on a lot of my friends from comedy. It's going to be, that's why they call it special. It's going to be special. Remember, check out my website, www.dennisworth.webs.com. It's Joke in the Box Comedy. Comedy clubs and one of the guys I've had the pleasure of booking. Please welcome the comedy genius of my friend, Mr. Rich McCabe. Go get him, Rich. Thank you very much. All right. I'm actually just here until the pie's ready. That's all I'm waiting for. Oh, God. Last week, I was on a cruise ship, and uh, uh, luckily, because, uh, you know, it's the land of buffets, and my doctor asked me if I could pack just a few more pounds on before the holidays, so it seemed like the most uh, obvious way of doing that. But uh, we had a good time. I love, I don't know if you've ever been on a cruise. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, we, uh, we did a, uh, a stingray excursion. And uh, remember the crikey guy? The, uh, what was his name? Uh, Steve, Steve Irwin, I think it was. Uh, he died by these things. But yet we booked a, an excursion where we were going to be surrounded by these in the wild in the middle of the ocean. Because what could possibly go wrong with that idea? Uh, for only $80, you can also be around animals that killed Steve Irwin. Uh, but it was actually, it turned out to be incredibly fun. We had a great time. Um, what else do you need to know about me? I was raised by, for the most part, I was raised by a single mother. Um, any of you who've been raised by single mothers know that your life is a little bit different. I was 15 before I knew I could pee standing up. Um, you know, the, the first time I went into a, a men's room, I saw the urinals and I saw people standing there. And my mother already had an answer, already worked up, because she knew that question was going to come. So when I came out of the bathroom, I said, Mom, I saw guys standing in front of a urinal that looked like they were urinating. And she said, no, those are for guys specifically that have knees bent that bend the other way. So just to mess me up a little bit more, that's, you know, and don't say anything because they're very, very sensitive about it. So, um, but it was, uh, you know, it was, it was tricky. I, uh, my mother also practiced the first probably, uh, um, what did they call that show where, uh, you know, they 
oh God, I can't even think of the name of it now. It was the police thing where they'd scare the crap out of you. And uh, I remember hearing my mother talking to my sister, and uh, they, had dis- they were discussing how they were going to, where they were going to hide my body the next time I left the toilet seat up in the middle of the night and one of their butts hit the water. Um, so things were, things were a little bit different. I also realized that women are right. Women are always right, and there really isn't a second, uh, a second answer for that. And it's pretty easy to prove, too. There's a, there's a bit I do at, at a lot of clubs that I play where I ask guys to raise their hand if they are the one who makes the decision in their relationships. And only one time did I actually have a guy raise his hand, but that was immediately after he asked his wife if he could raise his hand to that question. So there's a perfect illustration of uh, the fact that guys don't make decisions anymore. It's the woman. Uh, you've probably had this happen. My wife, you know, I'm sitting in the, in the living room. She comes in. She says, honey, you know, let's go out to eat tonight. Okay, what time do you want to leave? I said, I don't know, 7.30? She goes, that's good. We'll leave at 8. Why are they even doing that? You know, it's, it's like they're just giving us the opportunity to possibly get, correct, you know, get the correct answer and make us feel like we have some kind of an input. It's, uh, it's unbelievable. What else? Um, got a little bit of a weight issue. I've always had a weight issue, although when I was a kid, nobody knew it because I used to swim with a T-shirt on <clears throat> until this past summer we were at a pool and I saw a fat kid in a T-shirt and kind of dawned on me. People probably knew that that little seven-year-old actually had breast and you could see him through the T-shirt. Um, I was, we, went, we were going uh, Bush Gardens and I love roller coasters. And we go on a roller coaster, we have an awesome time. We go on another roller coaster, we have an awesome time. We go on the third roller coaster, and I pull the, the harness down, and it's not clicking. I can't even get one click. And, and it's not even really that close to clicking. And I'm thinking, you know, I didn't eat anything between roller coaster number two and roller coaster number three. This shouldn't be happening. So <clears throat> I finally, and I quit smoking a couple years ago, so now I can hold my breath a little bit. So I figure, you know what, the ride's about a minute and a half long. If I suck in my gut as hard as I can, and I pull this thing as hard as I can, so I do it, and I get one click. So I'm kind of proud of myself that I'm actually in the thing now. But I'm also scared to death that I'm one click away from flinging off this ride as soon as we go over that first hill. So I get it clicked in, and a dude, guy comes running over that works and has to check everybody. And he obviously saw me having problems. And he goes, dude, he goes, you're like two French fries from not being able to ride this ride anymore. And I was like, well, what is that about? Chances are, you know, there's a little handbook they get of things to say and not to say to guests. And I'm thinking that he was probably ad-libbing there. So, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of tough. I've, uh, bike riding. We took up bike riding because my wife said it would be a good idea. And uh, over the last, I don't know, 20, 30 years, seats have gone from this to about this big. And uh, I don't know a lot about sizing bikes to people, but we did have a professional do this. But I'm still thinking that if you get off your bicycle and you hear, that seat probably doesn't fit you correctly. Thanks for listening. That's what I got. My name is Richard McCabe. All right, I want to thank you guys at home for tuning in. Make the banana cream pie. I want to thank uh, our studio audience. I want to thank the crew. And uh, tune us in for the roast and tune us in our next episode. Until then, remember to eat well and laugh well, folks. Good night.